up here, down there, out there, all around the world. Welcome to The Late Show. I want to say hi to all my fans in Mexico City, right off the top. <laughs> hi. There you go. There you go. Broadcasting live to Mexico City right now. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, you know, I I I've done the show for seven years now. We've had a very good time, but I try never to lose sight of the fact that having one of these shows is a profound privilege. Not just to tell jokes, ha ha. <laughs> but to inform you, the public, that is a sacred trust. And no one in late night gives you the midterm primaries in five states in mid-May like the team at The Late Show. <laughs> this is... Election night in 10% of America, 22. I'm in that train. Woo! The results are in, and America has upheld its proud tradition of not knowing who won. <laughs> at least, at least in one race everyone's talking about, the Republican nomination for Senate in Pennsylvania, which pits former hedge fund executive and customer asking the manager why the people at that table got their food first. <laughs> David McCormick against TV charlatan and winner of the Emmy for Outstanding Achievement in Self-Taxidermy, Dr. Mehmet Oz. <laughs> now, as of this, as of this taping, uh, the race is a toss-up, with Dr. Oz getting 31.3% of the vote to McCormick's 31.1%. Wow, that's a nail-biter. That is stressful. And there is no better cure for stress than Dr. Oz's raspberry <laughs> ketone and green coffee bean protein pancake mix. Side effects include stress. Here's the thing. It's, 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 it is. It's a nail biter, but both sides remain confident. Last night, McCormick's chief strategist tweeted, based on how many uncounted absentee ballots there are and the margin by which Dave has won them so far, that's why we are confident of victory. While an advisor to Dr. Oz pointed to uncounted ballots in Philadelphia and declared, it's a jump ball, which I will remind you is how they eventually decided Bush v. Gore. Okay? W was a monster in the paint. He was a monster in the paint. He took the rock to the Rehnquist. Now, <laughs> Pennsylvania law requires a recount when the margin is half a percentage point or less. But one Dr. Oz supporter sees a way around that. I'm talking, of course, about former President Fraud Flintstone, <laughs> AKA Flabadabadagoo. Old Flabadabba said somewhere on the internet that Oz should not trust outstanding mail-in ballots typing, Dr. Oz should declare victory. It makes it much harder for them to cheat with the ballots that they just happen to find. Well, I will give him this. He is an authority on cheating. Just ask all of his wives. <laughs> we do. It's been a while. It's been a while. Just throw it out there. <laughs> throw corn. Throw the corn out for the chickens. <laughs> we do know who the winner of the race will face in the general election. That's Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, seen here in his formal hoodie. <laughs> now, unlike uh, over with the Republicans, the Democratic race was not even close, with Fetterman capturing 59% of the vote and possibly going on to win every county in Pennsylvania. Clearly, he's a rising star, which may be why. One Biden advisor told CNN, quote, there are big similarities between John Fetterman <laughs> and Joe Biden. <laughs> and that could explain Biden's latest makeover. <laughs> That's nice. That's good. He should do it. He should I go for I it. I don't think he should Just go don't for fight it, time. right? Just go right? <laughs> don't write it, right, Fouché? Just go for it. <laughs> now, Pennsylvania Republicans did decisively choose a candidate for governor, state senator, and Mr. Clean going through a rough divorce. <laughs> Doug Mastriano. Mastriano is a hard right Christian nationalist and a central figure in efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election in Pennsylvania. That victory speech. Must have been a little awkward. Thank you, Pennsylvania. I couldn't have done this without Dominion voting machines and the ghost of Hugo Chavez. These elections are rigged. Stop the steal. Lock me up. <laughs> Lock me up.
One of the big losers last night was North Carolina Representative Madison Cawthorn, seen here... <laughs> seen here entering a list of his top Axe body spray scents into the congressional record. <laughs> Mango musk! <laughs> Cawthorn had the ex-president's endorsement, but he still lost the Republican primary to North Carolina state senator and hotel concierge watching you and your wife kiss. <laughs> Chuck Edwards. In addition to his role in the state Senate, uh, Edwards operates McDonald's franchises in western North Carolina. So while Cawthorn had the ex-president's support, Edwards was endorsed by the ex-president's top advisor. <laughs> now, it's kind of shocking. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here is uh, the dealio. It's kind of shocking for an incumbent MAGA-approved congressman to lose his primary but it may have had something to do with Cawthorn angering his GOP colleagues back in March when he said this. The sexual perversion that goes on in Washington, all of a sudden you get invited to, like, well, hey, we're gonna have kind of a, a, a sexual get-together at one of our homes. You should come. And I'm like, what, what, what did you just ask me to come to? Yeah. Uh, and then you realize they're asking you to come to an orgy. Some of the people that are leading on the movement to try and remove, you know, addiction in our country. And then you watch them do, you know, a key bump of cocaine right in front of you. Okay, that's an obvious lie. If members of Congress were on cocaine, they would get a lot more done. <laughs> okay. Woo! Woo! Okay, that's 10 bills already passed. Tell you what, tell you what, bro. Tell you what, bro, let's file cloture and keep going. Just read the budget aloud while I clean the center chamber with a toothbrush or start a band. Anyone else crazy thirsty? <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> going to the shore. That's just the tip. <laughs> I've heard, I don't know, that's what I heard. But that's just the tip of what I imagine were a good number of tips, because Cawthorn has a bunch of scandals, including being accused of engaging in insider trading, charged with driving with a revoked license, and being stopped for trying to bring a gun through airport security twice. <laughs> that is so stupid. Everyone knows you can't bring a gun to the airport. You have to wait till you're through security, then go to Hudson News to get a travel-sized gun. <laughs> but now, Cawthorn is on his way out, which is a tough break. How, how will you deal with this defeat, Madison? A key bump of cocaine. Okay. <laughs> okay, whatever gets you through the night. Now, in pandemic news, numbers certainly seem to be going up here in New York, where this week, coronavirus cases reached a high alert level. Now, to be fair, when you're walking around New York City, you're always on high alert. <laughs> honey, 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 walk faster. Don't turn around. The guy behind us isn't wearing pants, and he's wearing an Elmo head, and not where he's supposed to. Oh, God! He's got a Greenpeace petition. Move! Move! <laughs> COVID. COVID is also, it's also rising out on the West Coast. Case in point, my dear friend and fellow late-night host Jimmy Kimmel has tested positive for COVID once again. We wish him a speedy recovery. But I do want to point out, getting COVID twice is kind of my thing. <laughs> and if you're going to steal my bit, Jimmy, I have no choice but to steal one of yours, too. It's time for Mean Tweets. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Get better, Kimmel, because you can't get worse. <laughs> very mean. That's very, that's very mean. Very mean. <laughs> it's hard to tell if Kimmel got COVID from a staff member or a family member because most of his staff are family members. <laughs> Sad to hear that COVID sidelined my third favorite Jimmy after Fallon and Dean Sausage. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why anyone would, would do this. I don't know why. Jimmy Kimmel has COVID? Who cares? I only watch his show for the roots anyway. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. But when we come back, Johnny Cash is back in the news for a reason that may surprise you. Stick around. <laughs> 